Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to St. Mary's here in Mega. It's wonderful to have you with us, whether you're a regular um, or whether you're just visiting. Uh, it's good to have you here as we gather virtually to worship God together. Today, the church celebrates the feast of St. Luke, um, who's best known for writing the gospel, which bears his name, and also the Acts of the Apostles. But he's referred to by Paul in one of his letters as the beloved physician. Um, and as such, he's also become the patron saint of surgeons and those who work for healing. So in our service today, as we celebrate his life, um, we pray for all those who, who are sick and suffering, and particularly those affected by the ongoing pandemic, and also pray for those who work for their healing. So as we prepare to worship, let's just take a moment to be still, to remember that we're wherever we are, and whatever's going around, on around us, um, that God is here with us. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So we pray together. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. We praise and thank you for the day on which you created light and saw that it was good. The day on which the disciples discovered the empty tomb and met the risen Christ. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. The God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. So we join with the first of our hymns, I Cannot Tell. How he whom angels worship. But these I know 
that he was born of Mary. When Bethlehem's manger was his only own, and that he lived at Nazareth and labored, and so the Savior, Savior of the world is come. I cannot tell how silently he suffered As with his peace he graced this place of tears Or oh, how his heart upon the cross was broken Two, three, and thirty years. But this I know, he heals a broken heart and stays a sin and comes out looking fair and lifts the who's going to read um, the readings for today, and then Jeremy is going to come and preach for us. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 3 to 6. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, 
with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. They will, then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout from joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. After this the Lord appointed seventy-two others, and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest fields. Go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the way. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, and eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do no more, do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God is near you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may your spoken word and may your written word lead us to your living word, our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today as a church, we are celebrating the Feast of St. Luke. He's also the patron saint of our diocese. The biblical evidence tells us that Luke was a doctor. He's responsible for writing two of the books of the New Testament, the Gospel which bears his name, and also the Acts of the Apostles. Now, Luke's writing is very important to us because he gives us a considerable amount of information about the life of Jesus and about the life of the early church, which can't be found anywhere else. Luke is also unique because He's the only non-Jew to have written a gospel account which still appears in the New Testament. We know Luke wasn't one of the 12 apostles of Jesus, but he did have a strong relationship with the others, many of the early Christians, and he was both a friend and a travelling companion of St Paul on some of his missionary journeys. Luke had a real burden for the outcasts of society. And we find him in his gospel continually emphasising Jesus' love and compassion for those who may find themselves on the fringes of society. Gentiles, women, tax collectors, publicans, so-called sinners, to name just a few. As a Gentile, Luke in all likelihood had considered himself to be something of an outsider. Perhaps he knew how it felt to feel lonely and isolated from not belonging. And so Luke has a particular concern for healing. He emphasises the love of Jesus for all people. He calls on the church to be truly inclusive and welcoming. Luke also had a great passion for mission and he wanted to share the good news of Jesus far and wide. And we witnessed that passion, that real desire for mission in our Gospel reading for today, as we hear Luke's account of Jesus sending out his disciples on their first missionary journey. The disciples are sent out to go and share God's love far and wide. But before he sends them on their, on their way, we find Jesus giving them some final words of advice and encouragement. Firstly, he warns them that they might encounter opposition. But then he tells them that they need to travel light 
to learn to trust in God for their every need. They're not to be too weighed down with the burdens of this world and material things. Jesus tells his followers that it's in their vulnerability that they'll find God's strength, that it's in their weakness they'll discover how much God is able to achieve through them. And we know that was so because a little bit later in Luke's Gospel, he records how the disciples returned to Jesus, excited, full of stories about the amazing things that they'd witnessed happening. Amazed by how the people had responded. Through their weakness, through their vulnerability, God had been able to do great things. I think there is an important message for all of us as individuals and as the church. Are we trusting? Are we vulnerable enough to allow God to work his purposes out through us? Do we still believe that God is able to do the miraculous and bring about healing and wholeness in our lives and in the life of our world? If we've given up believing that, then perhaps it's no surprise that our faith may seem to be wavering or weak, or we find the institution of the church in such sharp decline. And if you sat there thinking, well, that's all the vicar's job, isn't it? Well, you might want to read our gospel story for today again, because Jesus makes it very clear that it, the responsibility of mission lies upon all of us as his followers. We're all called to do our part in sharing the good news of God's love, though how we go about that may be very different for each of us. And so the disciples learn that it's through their weakness and their vulnerability that God is able to work. He's able to achieve great things. It was only when they realised that then they were ready to go out and bring about healing and wholeness to other people, to the wider world. Salvation, wholeness, healing, peace with God are all important themes in the Gospels. Vulnerability and powerlessness, identification, suffering, being put right, being made whole, being restored as part of a new creation are all at the very centre of the Christian faith. These are the ways which we as Jesus' modern day disciples can come face to face with him. And healing and wholeness are very important parts of this whole salvation story. They're also an important part of the church's ministry. In the story of creation, right at the beginning of the Bible, we're told about how God created the world. And we're reminded God saw it and it was very good. That goodness was soon to be broken by sin, but again, wonderfully restored through the life and the ministry of Jesus. And as Christians, we live and we're called to recognise that restoration, to seek to live it out in our lives. That will include the healing of broken bodies, divided communities and nations, the healing of the world itself. Those very things that Jesus sent his disciples out to achieve. But just like them, we also have to discover that we'll be unable to do any of that in our own strength. If we do, it's set for failure. But when we receive in a healing, wholeness, in our vulnerability, in our weakness, then God is able to do those things. Once a month prior to COVID here in the church in Mega, as part of our Eucharist, we would take the opportunity to focus particularly upon those gifts of healing and wholeness. And I just wonder what that might mean in the lives of each of us today. Where do we need to seek healing and wholeness in our lives? It may be healing of body or of mind, perhaps for ourselves or for someone close to us. 
And I know all too well that so many people in our community are in need of our prayers, are in need of God's healing at this time, because so many have to face up to illness and difficulty. For others, it'll be the need for healing deep within ourselves, for the healing of inner hurt, the divisions and the splits that we find in our own lives, within our families and within our communities. All those things that stop us from being those people that God calls us to be. Each of us are in need of prayer for healing and for wholeness in one way or another. And as we come together in church or whether we sat at home watching online, I believe that today as we celebrate St Luke is an opportunity for us to receive that healing and that wholeness. So I'd just like us to pause for a few moments of stillness, a time when we might ask God to bring to our mind a person, a situation or an inner need where we need to receive healing today. So let's just silently hold that person or that need before God. And so a prayer for all of us. Blessed are you, sovereign God, gentle and merciful, the creator of heaven and earth. Your word brought light out of darkness, and daily your spirit renews the face of the earth. Your anointed Son brings healing to those in weakness and distress. He broke the power of evil and set us free from sin and death, that we may praise your name for ever and ever. So may the power of your Spirit rest upon us and bring us your blessing. May it be upon those who we pray for today. May it be upon us in our need, so that we may be made whole in body, mind and spirit, restored in your image, renewed in your love, so that we may serve you as sons and daughters in your kingdom. We ask this through your anointed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we lift our voices with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. We can pray privately for those individuals for our own need of healing, but sometimes it's good to share those needs with other people, for other people to pray with us and for us, or indeed to receive the church's ministry of healing or reconciliation. And if at any time you or someone you know would like us to pray with you or for you, then please do contact one of our clergy team and we'd be very willing to help. For blessed be God, our strength and our salvation, now and forever. Amen. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in your suffering, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives, cures for their ills. Work for the crossman, trade for their skills. Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak. Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak. 
and give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. Blessed are you, sovereign God, gentle and merciful, creator of heaven and earth. Your word brought light out of darkness. In Jesus Christ, you proclaim good news to the poor liberty to the captives, sight to the blind, and freedom for the oppressed. Daily your spirit renews the face of the earth, bringing life and health, wholeness and peace. In the renewal of our lives, you make known your heavenly glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So let us declare our faith in the God who binds up our wounds and cleanses us from our sin. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray for all who suffer and all who work for their healing. Holy God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we make our prayer to you, saying, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to all who seek you the assurance of your presence, your power and your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, that they may be made whole in body, mind and spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to all who minister to the suffering wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant to our government and all in authority compassion and care for the vulnerable. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew all your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Joining all our prayers together, let's pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It's the collect prayer for today. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician whose praise is in the gospel to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, Give your church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Before we finish, a couple of notices. Um, as I mentioned last week, uh, starting this Tuesday at 7 o'clock on Zoom, um, we're beginning our Discipleship Explored series. Um, looking not just at what Christians are meant to do, um, like read, pray the Bible, stuff like that, but why we do all that stuff, what all that stuff flows out of. Um, I'm going to play the trailer again, um, just to give you a bit of a flavour as to what the course is like.
So it would be wonderful to have you join us for that. Um, if you'd like more information, um, you can head over to our website, megaministeriaorguk forward slash discipleship dash explored. Um, and you can also sign up to the course there. You have until five o'clock um, this evening to sign up online. That way we can get enough handbooks and get them to you in time for Tuesday. The services for the coming week um, will be on the end slide of this service. Um, but we'd love to see you um, in person at one of our services. Um, so if you'd like to come along, um, booking opens at nine o'clock tomorrow and closes at two o'clock on Thursday. Um, and you can do that either through our website or by ringing through to the office. Also, the start, we did an introduction to it um, on Friday, um, but we've just started a new series looking at the Psalms, uh, both on YouTube um, and on Facebook. Um, so whichever's easiest for you, um, you can find it on either. Um, but it's a series where people have picked um, their favorite Psalm uh, and read it um, so we can think about it together and then reflect on what that Psalm means to them and more what that psalm means to them about God as well. Um, so it should be a really good series, so I hope you'll join us for that. It's only about five minutes per video. Um, so just a little pause on your Fridays. Well, it's been wonderful to have you with us um, to worship online this morning. If we can be praying for you um, or anyone you know, um, we'd love to be doing that. Um, so if we can do that, uh, just send us an email. The, the details should be on the bottom of the screen um, as I'm speaking. Um, but please don't hesitate to get in touch. We'd love to be praying for you. So before the sending out, shall we sing the final of our hymns? Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. So we sing together. Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.